Uh, this is just a, a summary of the workshop, the CI workshop that we had, well, like the CI term one. So uh, I'm going to talk about the plan, the reality, and then the discussions. So the plan was to provide an overview of, this, of the system that would be a bit deeper than what the, the talk was about. Um, I wanted to walk the attendees through the instructions, so how to set up the hardware, you know, like what to connect where, uh, how to uh, connect the PDU to the, uh, to the gateways. Uh, then wanted to show them how to discover a dot, so what you show in the slides before, like where you had the discover button, and then uh, have it exposed on GitLab, and then use this dot in GitLab CI. So, and finally, I wanted the uh, attendees to uh, go through, uh, I mean, to follow these instructions on three, uh, the three gateways that I was providing, uh, along with six dots. So uh, that's now the reality. So there were a couple of people. I'm very, very happy with the attendance. So we were about 15. So that was good. Then uh, we managed to set up the gateway and then uh, the PDU. So that's, again, wonderful. Uh, what didn't work is <laughs> when we tried to use the dot it, uh, in GitLab CI, it just wouldn't have any serial works. Uh, yeah, that's what happens when you don't test this part. <laughs> Sorry, when you make assumptions, uh, you make an ass of yourself. So, and yeah, and finally, uh, we wanted to have the attendees try it, and uh, only Danilo managed to do that because he was, uh, uh, sorry, not Danilo, Dimitri. Um, he was doing it at the same time as I, was, as I was talking, but otherwise we didn't get to this point. But what we did talk about is a couple of things. So, uh, fast boot support is one thing. So, um, in the presentation, I was saying that we wanted to standardize the boot process and we standardized on uh, Pixie slash iPixie, or mostly iPixie, so basically network boot. Uh, not every device is, um, is network bootable, or it could be done, but then it's just you know making it harder. Um, so uh, one type of device is phones and then, uh, or Android stuff. So they, the, the standard there is to use fast boot. And uh, fortunately, it's possible to keep the auto discoverability of everything. So basically, if you treat the USB hot plugs like IPC requests, then uh, you can, uh, when there is a hot, uh, hot plug, then you can check if um, there is, a, well, if it is a fast boot device. If it is, then you get the machine serial ID. Then you ask, uh, hey, what is the boot configuration that need to, set, to be sent, and then you just send that, and then it boots. So that's uh, very good. Another use case is the uh, Apple M1 slash 2 support. So um, here the scenario is a little funkier because they are using the mini hypervisor, which allows controlling a, a ton more things than uh, what you would normally expect, which would be just a kernel in HRFS and kernel command line. You can there also uh, well specify the like you can chain load the uh, MinIO bootloader itself. And then um, uh, also uh, they would like to be able to select which firmware version that they want to deploy. So that's great. Uh, and just like Fastboot, they also can control the boot process through USB and they show up with uh, uh, yeah, a USB device ID. So basically we can do the same system and have auto discovery of everything. So, so uh, yeah, that's doable. And finally, another thing for Asahi, uh, they need to be able to take uh, over some unpartitioned space between partitions. So that's the, our, have support to take over space at the end of the drive, um, but not in the middle between partitions. And the reason why they have that is because the recovery partition is found at the end of the, the partition table. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.